All right, Clemson Nation, we know years and years and years and years from now, you will all be able to recite the score of the spring game because it is oh so important. The Orange won, the defense won 27 to 12, so lock that away. All right, we're talking Clemson football. Of course, we're doing a post game here at the Voice of College Football, our first of many throughout the month of April. And we so much appreciate Jason Priester holding things down for us for the next uh, 50, 60 minutes here at the Boys of College Football. Jason Priester, you can catch it on allclemsontigers.com. Jason, what's going on? Oh, you know, just, you know, just a normal old day you know, outside for a little football this afternoon. April football, man. We all love April football, don't we? Well, I always say about the spring games that I get excited when I see the list of teams and like, OK, I miss football. Can't wait. And then I see a few plays and I'm like, eh, OK, it's spring football. It's a practice. My, but my uh, I will say this. Uh, Jason, for those of us who couldn't watch the game, I, I tried to find it streaming and, and there were folks that were streaming it, but there was a big black box over all the action. Uh, it was on the ACC Network Extra, and that's where you could find it. But 47,000 folks at the stadium, including Jason here. So, Jason, what was uh, before we get to the nuts and bolts of the football, just uh, the feel in the stadium and hopefully you got a good game and a good day to watch a football game. It was 40,000. That, that was the number from the 47, day? 47,000. Yeah, I'm going I'm I'm to go out on a ledge here and guess that that number was a little overinflated there. <laughs> I thought the crowd was a little on the underwhelming side as opposed to some games in the past. Um, you know, I've seen it with 50, 60,000 people there for spring games, and today's did not come close to, to matching the amount of people that was at those games. I, I would have had it put it in the ballpark of 30, 25, 30 maybe. Um, although I'm not the best guesstimate get, I'm not the best estimator of crowds, but I, I thought 25, 30, 50, 47 seems a little on the high side, but um, you know, it, it was your typical clips of spring game, you know, it, it's, you always get the laid back crowd. I mean, not saying they don't get into games, but they do, they do because they do. Don't get me wrong. I mean, especially when things are going good, but you know, it's just a laid back spring afternoon here in the upstate. Um, a little tailgating. Too bad they don't start a little bit later than one and people can spend more time out at the tailgates. I'm sure a lot of people were hanging out after the game or left at halftime or whatever. You know, um, I was a little surprised about how about how few tailgating tents I saw today. I drove straight in, no traffic, got to park real close to the stadium. Didn't have to. I mean, it, again, there it, it was a few less people than I was expecting, but but I wasn't totally surprised either. You know, coming off eight and four season, it was a little cool outside this morning. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. Jason Priester is here from allclemsontigers.com to answer your questions about the Clemson spring game because I've got plenty of questions for Jason, so I'll just keep it rolling. But if you've got your comments and questions, we will go to you in the chat. Uh, we'll start with the guy that everyone wants to talk about, of course, Cade Klubnick. So last time we saw Cade Klubnick, of course, he led that uh, game-winning touchdown drive against Kentucky in the Gator Bowl. Today's numbers, 13 of 26, a buck 58 through the air. And so that was Cade Klubnick's day on the stat sheet. Uh, what did you see out there? Slow start for Cade. I thought he got better in the second quarter. Um, you know, th there's some signs of growth, but still need to he, – he, he still got some growing to do if we're just going by what we saw today. You know, I, I'm not a big believer in taking a whole lot of things from the spring game. Um, but, but if you just going by what you see today, there, there's still some things he needs to work on. I, I don't think I, I do think the game looks like it's slowed down, you know, for him for the most part. But you know, he, he's got to be better with making his with his decision making. Sometimes he puts the ball in jeopardy uh, a little too often. He had the one pick today, which I don't think was on him. Adam Randall didn't break off a route he was supposed to. He, he, it was a miscommunication, um, easy pick for the defensive back, but. There were a couple more that probably could have been picked off that he put in jeopardy that that weren't intercepted. So, got to get a little bit better with his decision making. Um, but 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 other than that, after the slow start, I, I thought he settled in okay. He made he probably made one of the best throws of the day was a fifty five yard pass down the field to to Randall there. But 
Um, you know, it, it was at least nice to see them attempt to push the ball down the field. They didn't do it very often, but but at least they tried to do it a couple of times a day. But, you know, you, know, you, you got to still see more growth out of club. Like, absolutely. Droid, uh, good to see you here and uh, glad to see that uh, you experienced a Clemson spring football game for the first time and had an amazing experience. So good for you. That's something that everyone should be able to experience with their favorite football team at least once. All right, Jason, I'm going to flip to the other side. Uh, Trent Pierman, 13 of 18, buck 34, had a big rushing touchdown from 49 yards. What did you see there? You know, I, I see, I saw exactly what I've always heard about Trent Pierman and what I saw of him when I saw him in high school. The kid, the kid can play, man. He's a little undersized. He doesn't have the big arm. You know, he doesn't have like a elite arm strength or anything like anything like that. But he gets the ball out on time. His understanding of the offense is, you know, is what where you need it to be. He knows it really well. He he's a he's he's what I would call a gamer. Um, he does not put the ball – we were talking about clubbing it, putting the ball in jeopardy. Pierman doesn't do that. You know, he gets it out on time and gets it to where it's supposed to go. And he, he can he can beat you with his legs too. He had a big run today. I forget how long it was, 50-something yards, maybe 60-something yards, I forget. But, um, you know, again, based off of what we saw today, because, you know, I've not been at practice. We don't get to see practice and those kind of things. And, and I think, you know – Spring games always bring about a bunch of overreactions, and this might be one. But just based off of what we saw today, that, you know, you can make the argument that that guy, that guy might need to be the backup right now, man, because he looked better than what we saw from Chris Pizzina. Make no mistake. And, he, and, you know, to be perfectly clear, you know, if you're looking at the overall body of work from beginning to end today, he was the best quarterback on the field, period. I mean, he, he had the most productive day by far. Yeah, and I just want to emphasize what uh, Jason's talking about here. So the spring game, it's on TV. People can watch it. That's what makes it more important than everything else to the fan base because you can see it. So that's that's understandable, but it's not more important than them going out there 15 times in total and the evaluation and that complete look of 15 uh, practices to the to the coaching staff to see where these guys stand. Now, does it give us a slice and indication? Yes, of course it does because it's those guys out on the field competing. But it's also a situation where somebody could be having a great spring. They had a bad day today. Somebody else could be having a mm, so so spring, but maybe they walked into a few plays that look really good and they were able to do something that that looked good. So, yeah, overreaction is uh, something we see after. Uh, Spring play. Uh, this defensive tackle. I don't know that we we've talked about this. Uh, and and if I botch his first name, you certainly let me know here. Stephylian Green. Stephylon. Stephylon. Have we talked about him? He redshirted last year, so probably not a lot. Um, I, I might have mentioned him a time or two, just huh. vaguely or in passing. But he he redshirted last year. Didn't play really. So um, he's a big time get out of high school. They they. They're big on him. We've talked many times about how deep Clemson has Clemson is on the interior of that defensive line. And, you know, he he's not really a guy that gets named a lot because you got Peyton Page and Trey Williams and DeMonte Capehart and guys like that. And and even Vic Burley, who was in the same signing class as Green, that, that kind of get a lot of the attention. But 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 Green showed today that that he can play at a high level too. Again, he was a big get out of high school. They're high on him. They think he's got an extremely high ceiling. He was very disruptive today. Extremely disruptive. And to me, that's what you want to see out of your defensive tackles. Okay, I'm going to be jumping all over the place because I was taking notes based on what I saw and what I saw online and then we also have our chat here. So, I'm going to go to Huffer Billy here who says, "How is it we still have no center?" There are basically three guys in play here, right, Jason? Yeah, I actually asked Dabo about the center spot Wednesday, um, you know, and he said Ryan Lampton was going to come out of spring a little bit ahead of um, Trent Howard and Harrisul, who, who was just a sophomore. I can't even remember the last time Clemson had a underclassman start at center or, you know, that, that 
wasn't due to injury or something, you know, that won the starting job. Um, and again, he said Lanthicum was probably going to come, he was going to come out of spring a little bit ahead, but there was still more he wanted to see. And we didn't get to see much of Lanthicum today. He left fairly early. He he twisted an ankle or something. Dabo said after it wasn't serious, but the, the guy I might would, you know, keep an eye on his soul. He, he really just kind of started playing center this spring. And I have had more than one person tell me that he has kind of adapted really well so far. He even struggled with the snapping at first. Dabo touched on that a little bit the other day. But we'll, we'll see if he can make it a legit competition in the fall. Um, you know, Lanthicum is a guy they've kind of been waiting on to the, develop. They've been able to be patient with him, you know, because because you had Putnam there last year and the year before last. But um, Lanthicum was a guy that was – I mean, he wasn't like a five-star coming out of high school, but he was, he was fairly highly touted by at least one or two of the services and – They've kind of let him develop at his own pace, but but if you listen to Dabo talk the other day, you know there there's still more he wanted to, wants to see out of length. I mean, he talked about his body, he wants to see his body in the best shape it's ever been. So it kind of sounded like so, so a little bit of effort on Dabo's part to kind of motivate him as we head into the summer months. But um, yeah, it's those three guys: Lanthicum, Howard, Sewell. I think Sewell's the wild card there, man. Um, you know, he is. Dabo kept – he said it three times the other day, if I'm not mistaken. He's coming. He's coming. Um, and, and the fact that he's even made it a little bit of a competition this quick either speaks volumes to how quickly he's adapting or how slowly Lincoln is developed. So you have to, you know, kind of pick your poison there. Tough to get a read on a lot of this because, number one, it's not a real game. Number two, anytime somebody looks good, somebody else looks bad because they're all on the same team. Uh, You're also, instead of a regular season game where you're just more focused on Clemson than the other team, you're trying to watch both sides of the football at the same time and see if anybody stands out. So I'm sure you're going to gain a lot from reviewing this. But in terms of since we hit the center, any other thoughts about offensive line play and and anything standing out there? Matt Luke's got some work to do with that group still. Um, yeah, this is something Dabo touched on today after the spring game. You know, th- those guys, you know, from an assignment standpoint, have been really good this spring. But from a technique standpoint, there's a lot of work still to be done. And, you know, they've only had, you know, the, the 15 practices really under loop. They got the handful of bowl practices. I don't know how much, you know, he really got to work with them during bowl prep. Probably not much, you know, as far as coaching his style and his way and stuff. That probably really just started this spring. They'll, they'll probably really get into it in the fall. But I was not overly impressed with the offensive line play today. But, it's again, it's a spring game. Um and, you know, you can say that the rosters are split up, but, you know, you have four to five starters on the same team with, with Lee and um, – golly, I'm drawing a blank here – Lee and Blake Miller and the two guards and Lent to come at center. The only guy missing was was Walker Parks, but if I'm not mistaken. But um, I, I was not overly impressed with the offensive line today. I think they still – they got some work to do. There wasn't a lot of room to run the defensive line, especially the interior kind of had their way with those guys. And, you know, you don't know if that's just a, a sign of the offensive line being that bad or the defensive line being that good because we know that defensive line is legit. So, you know, if you're Clemson, you want the, you want the truth to lie somewhere in the middle, I guess. Droid says, thank you for all you do, Jason. And Huffer Billy says, you are looking <laughs> younger by the day. I don't feel younger by the day, I promise. <laughs> oh, man, days like today remind me how old I am getting. Huffer Billy also showing up with this one. Uh, I was going to lead with Bryant Wesco, of course. People are excited about him, but in totality, looking at explosive plays and lack thereof, apparently, this was a defensive-dominated game. And and most spring games are. Uh because the defense is usually has less to, to figure out. But uh, just your thoughts about uh, Huffer Billy's comment about Garrett Riley's second season offense. I think that's to to be determined. I don't know if we're if today is a really good 
testament of how explosive or unexplosive this offense is going to be. Um, they they at least made the effort to push the ball down the field a, a handful of times, not very many that that I saw, just a few. And I spent a lot of the second half looking at my laptop while I was writing, but you know I watched most of the first half and. You know, they, they didn't make a lot of effort, and that was probably by design. You know, I, I said it last week on on, on, a, on a different show that, you know, I was not expecting a lot offensively. You know, Clemson's offensive offenses in the spring game, of the, the game plans have always been very vanilla, and the day was no different. Um, and not to mention the fact you, you, you're playing with split split rosters, even if you got most of the offensive line on one side, but they did they, they, that defensive line just abused them. There wasn't a whole lot of time to let anything develop down the field. But again, there there wasn't there wasn't a whole lot of effort made in in, in that regard. So I, I I'm gonna have to say to be determined on that. I got to see it in a real game. I'm not I'm definitely not grading that off any spring game. Can always uh, sponsor the Voice of College Football, whether that's uh, any of the team channels, the main channel, or of course, right here on the Clemson channel. Just hit me up at Mark Rogers TV at Gmail. You might be surprised what we can do for you in a partnership. So just hit us up for a sponsorship there, and we will give it a look. Uh, I'm going to throw out a name, and then you can take this off uh, on the defensive side. Uh, Jaheim Lawson had a end zone interception, made a nice play on that. Uh, any other guys along the defensive side that stood out to you? Uh, yeah, Jamal Anderson. Um, I thought he was really good today. Had the the pick six and had another interception that was called back. You know, he he baited, he kind of baited Vizina into that throw, I thought, you know, read his eyes. And I, again, I'd have to go back and watch it again. But um, he, he was a guy that stood out. Um, I, I thought Antonio Williams looked very good very quick and, and agile and I thought I'm gonna use the word explosive I thought he looked explosive today not that they were I'm just mean getting in and out of his breaks and stuff after he didn't play all last year pretty much um and, and Bryant Wesco you know he he stands out he's a guy that's gonna help you he I don't think he's gonna start and he's not gonna play 50 60 70 snaps a game I don't think he's gonna be physically ready but he's a guy that's gonna be in the rotation he's he's gonna help you um, AJ Hoffler is another guy that stood out to me today. I think he's going to help. I think he's going to help um, this team from from a pass rushing standpoint, getting after the quarterback. Um, we've talked about him many times. I've been high on that dude since they signed him, um, and, and he kind of looks the part this year. So the, 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 off the top of my head, that those are some of the guys that that really stood out. Appreciate y'all being here at the Voice of College Football. Of course, Clemson enjoying its spring game. And the next time we will see the Tigers on the field, of course, will be against a um, team from Georgia. I don't know exactly who that is. It's, it's a team from Georgia. I don't know if they're any good, but uh, that's going to be a game you may want to watch uh, August 31st. So there we go. The 15th session uh, for Clemson football. So, of course, they're going to be doing their individual workouts and all of that, and then they all get together as a team uh, the first week of uh, August, right at the end of July. Sammy Brown, anything from Sammy Brown? I know a lot of people were excited to see him out there. Yeah, he's probably another one I should, should have said stood out because that guy, you talking about somebody who looks the part, that is him. He, he had a sack on the very first play from scrimmage. Um, he just – he, he kind of anchored – that that defense on one side of the ball today you know you just don't typically see a freshman come in with that kind of knowledge and that kind of football iq right off the bat um he didn't i, I never i did, never saw him in the wrong he seemed to always be in the right spot man he just he sees everything so well and his sideline to sideline speed is just it is it is impressive man that that that's another guy that's going to help you this year man he he's he's going to be there's one freshman on that team that I am confident 100% that is going to help this team. Yeah, I would say I am most confident in Sammy Brown. All right. Dylan's going to get to the place kicking situation here. Dylan, appreciate you being here. 
Yeah, I don't know if Hoosier's going to be the starting kicker or not. You know, I know Robert Gunn missed two today. Um, one of them was from 55 yards, had the leg. He just pushed it, looked like a, a little bit wide. Um, and then he missed the next one right after that. And, and Hoosier hit one from 48, which, which was kind of low. It, it wouldn't have shot him. I thought it might get blocked when it first came off his foot. But that's another battle that – um. Dabo said, or at least made out, like is is pretty close. He called the competition steady Eddie Wednesday. I actually said Gunn had been a little bit more consistent throughout the spring, which pretty, kind of surprised me a little bit. Um, because we, I think everybody, including myself, just assumed Hoosier would come in here, win that job, probably even maybe even rather easily, and it doesn't sound like that's going to be the case at all. Because with, with Gunn. It's never been a question about the leg. He's got it. He's got a cannon for a leg. His leg might even be stronger than Hoosier's. It was the mental part that he needed to get down. He was just not ready to be put in that position last year. And it, it'll be a matter of whether he's got that. He, he's mastered that mental aspect. Jason Priester's here, allclemsontigers.com. Get on over there. Check out Jason's work on a daily basis, not just football, of course, baseball as well. And behind Phil Maffa, did we learn anything today with those number two, three, and four running backs? You know, the, the running back that stood out the most to me today was Peyton Strecko, <laughs> who probably won't play at all this season. Um, That's the spring know, game for you. Yeah, I mean, he, he looked really good. Um, you know, I, I think Keith Adams is probably pretty entrenched in that role behind um, – Phil Moffa right now. Moffa didn't play today, so they could get some of those other backs some work. Um, and Jay Haynes didn't play. He, he's barely practiced any this spring, and they're hoping they can finally get him healthy this fall because they think he can help them. He's probably the fastest back, you know, in that room. And they need a guy that can bring some speed, especially if it's going to be Moffa and Adams, you know, your top two running backs because they're those guys aren't blazing fast. They're not home run threats every time they – carry the ball and, and Haynes is that kind of guy. He could be a really good change of pace guy. Um uh, after watching his Jamu May today, I think he's probably yeah, I, I could see him red shirt this year. You know, he might need a year. We'll see. Um we'll see what he does in fall camp. But but not that he doesn't have the talent, you know, it's just uh learning everything. Um but I would say right now you got those you got Mafa and Keith Adams are your top two backs. And if you can get Haynes healthy, he'll probably be a change of pace guy. I think Jarvis Green can help you if you need him too. All right. We're talking Clemson football with all of you. Appreciate you being here at the Voice of College Football, of course. You can uh, support us in a number of ways. Uh, the Amazon link's in the description section of all the videos, folks. So when you shop on Amazon, please use the link that we provide. It's exactly the same shopping experience for you. So you're not going to see any difference and everything gets credited to your account and all of that. And they still track all of your purchases and everything else. But uh, they also uh, give us a cut here at the Voice of College Football. So please do that. Uh, it's your way to contribute to the Voice of College Football financially without spending a penny. So please, again, the Amazon links in the description section of all the videos. All right. Um, we touched on the quarterbacks and we went with with specifically Klubnik and, and Pierman. And you did talk about Vizina as well. Do you think it's one, two, three without question? Or does Pierman get a shot at unseating Vizina? You know, I don't know. That's a good question. Because, I, you know, I, I said many times when, when Clemson signed Vizina that he was going to need at least a year possibly to and again you know today is just one day um he, he was not he did he was not that impressive today he, he made some bad decisions with the ball um he's got all the tools physically though he's got the arm you know he, he, he's very athletic um you know i think he's got a pretty good football iq you know he, he just he, he was some of the same things we said about club you know he, the, the game still needs to slow down for him and you know, I thought he was even more raw than Clubman was coming out of high school, which I, um, you know, I will say this. He looks much improved from last year's spring game 
But if we're just going by based off what we saw today, he still got a lot of room to improve. Um, you know, but again, it's just one day. Um, and, and you can never, you know, you can't always take everything Dabo Sweeney says after practice and his pressers, you know, you know, for, for hundred percent truth. Um, but they, they've said a lot of good things about Vizina this year and some of the players too. Um, so maybe it was just a bad date, but uh, you know, maybe not. Michael Forster, appreciate you being here asking about uh, the running backs use out of the backfield in the past game. If there's anybody who stands out as a pass receiver. Uh, Haynes has got good hands. Jean May's got good hands. I, I don't know about um, Adams because I've just not seen enough of him. But yeah, I would. The screen game's always going to be a big part of Garrett Riley's offense. You know, whether where this, you know, the your your standard screen to a running back coming out of the backfield or wide receiver screens or whatever. They're gonna, it's all, it's going to be a, a big part. Um, but if I had to take, if I had to name one guy, I, I'd probably go with Haynes. <laughs> so we've got uh, Dylan here asking about the transfer portal. So we are folks one week and a couple days away from the transfer portal. It opens up on April 15th. That's a Monday. So a week from Monday. And Jason, of course, you know, if you don't want to take off on any specific names, I don't know what your approach is there, but uh, just your thoughts about the transfer portal and what might happen there. I, I don't know, man. I, possibly. Um, you, you're always at risk of losing somebody in this era. Do I think one of the uh, starter or somebody that's supposed to play a ton of snaps this year is looking to transfer out? Probably not. Um, if somebody were to bold, it'd probably be somebody that's looking for more play in time or, or something in that regard. But uh, I think they got most of that stuff sorted out in the last portal window. Well, Jason, I'm not going to let you run off without uh, hitting you up on some recruiting. If there's anything out there that's going on uh, as we look ahead to the next few weeks or months. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they did Clemson. The spring game used to be a big recruiting event for Clemson. Not so much anymore. Um, they, they, they had a few guys there today. Um, one, I actually had one in town yesterday. Um, I'll make sure I got to get his name right. Zay Thomas, uh, um, defensive back. He was actually supposed to be there today, but he told me some some travel plans made it where he couldn't get home in time, so he ended up coming a day early. And he left with an offer. Um, but, you know, the next big recruiting event will be the big official visit weekend coming up in June. Um, Clemson just missed on one of their offensive line targets in Mason Short, who committed to Georgia yesterday, matter of fact. Um, and, you know, they've made offensive line a big priority in this class. They've already got two on board in, in Braden Jacobs and Easton Ware, and they want to add at least a couple more. You know, they're going to take a minimum of four. They might even take five in this cycle, and they want to hit on some um, – Big guys, they they, they want to get bigger and they want to get more talent in that room, even though I don't think they're, you know, lacking for talent, at least not on paper. Um, but that that would be the next big recruiting event. Clemson's got a top three class as it sits right now. There's some talented guys in this current recruiting class. You know, um, some some good pass rushers, a good running back in Gideon Davidson. Um, you know, I, I really like the quarterback they've gotten, Blake Hebert. So We'll see how it plays out. Jason Priester, all ClemsonTigers.com. Get on over there. Check out Jason's work. Jason and I typically get together just about every week here at the Voice of College Football. So we appreciate Jason jumping online with us once a week to break down Clemson football. And so I think uh, we are good to go. Don't see any other questions or comments there in the chat. Uh, I will say this, that we've got more people online right now, pushing 90 people than we've had the entire uh, 40, 45 minutes, whatever we've been on here. So keep in mind, just go back, watch what you missed. 
Uh, people are asking questions about things that we've um, gone over. So as soon as we get done, certainly go back, check out what uh, you missed. All right. Well, Jason, appreciate you being here. Yeah, um, I see my man down there telling me to bring Penny. Um, she don't travel well, bro. <laughs> she don't travel well. She's got to stay at the house. <laughs> That's one of my dogs. <laughs> there we go. That's what I figured. Uh, for Billy, appreciate you all being here, folks. And, and again, we get Jason about once a week. So we appreciate Jason doing that for us and coming on here on a Saturday night and spending some time with us. So thanks, everyone, for being here. Jason, as always, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. My pleasure, man. Appreciate it.